welcome to Railgun S, or, or like everyone else calls it, Railgun Season 2. This is the first episode review of the new season. And for the little, I guess, before thought on this series, it's, you know, it's kind of different for me. I like the superhero, superpower thing, and this is pretty much what Railgun is for me. It's the side story of Index, if you know what Index is. That was more science versus magic, while Rogan is more focused on the science aspects of uh, Academy City, which has thousands and thousands of students that have different powers, different abilities, and it's a combination of like schools and stuff, like a bunch of schools. So, yeah, this first se first season ended on with something called the ex I call it the experiment art, where they had uh, a bunch of young espers being experimented on there. And people are trying to take their powers and like merge them into one body, like a one one being. Misaka and her friends had to obviously take the take it down, and that's pretty much I think it's this episode takes place. A couple maybe a week. I don't know how long it's been since the events of the last season, but this kind of starts off with Misaka, the Rogan, kind of waiting on everyone else, waiting on Yuharu, Kuriko, and Satin. As, I guess they're going on like a shopping day or whatever, whatever you want to call it. And you kind of catch up with Satin being chased by these, I guess, hoodlums, gang guys, whatever, whatever you want to call them. And they're chasing her around because Satin, if, if you don't know her, she's got black hair and has like a, one flower in her hair. And with this character, she has no special ability. And all the espers are ranked from like level zero which is basically a, I am my equivalent of like a human, regular human to all the way to level 5 which is the highest and Kiriko kind of explains a little bit of this there's only 7 level 5's in this city so out of every, all the students in this school, this you know area there's only 7 high level like Masaka but anyway Satin's being chased by these guys and Kiriko and Yoharu part of the uh, group called Judgment basically like kind of like their enforcers not really the police, but since this whole area is full of students and schools, they don't really have cops per, per se. So, Judgment is like a, a disciplinary committee that takes care of espers that abuse their powers and commit crimes and things like that. So, with Kiriko, she has the ability to teleport, and she kind of teleports before the guys do anything to Satin, and you know, they're all like surprised that. <laughs> that there's a teleport like they haven't seen him before and Misaka kind of like comes out of nowhere and just like walks up to him like you know talking to the girls kind of ignoring the guys and they kind of mouth off to her they're going to beat her up because she's with these girls and she like electrocutes him and knocks him out and they cut to a scene where she's kind of like everyone else is kind of confused like why she just did that oh it was pretty funny you know with Kiriko she's just like Oh man, you, you did always do this, and this happens a lot in the first season too. With Misaka always overstepping her bounds and kind of butts in on the judgment stuff, and she's not a part of that, so kind of funny watching those scenes. And after that, the episode kind of picks off with Misaka at her school, which with her school it's uh, called uh, Tokiwari to Tokiwari School, and it's a school, middle school, full like just girls. It's all girls only in school. So you have all these espers work that live kind of on campus, so they don't really have any other outsiders that come in except the girls. And she's kind of in the library, just kind of hanging out because earlier they planned to sat in the other girls planned to meet someone later on, have a get together. And while Masaka's kind of chilling in the library, a couple of friends walk by and have a little chat. But this is more about a blonde girl named Miss Misaki, and she's uh. The queen of the school, and while well, Misaka, she's there. They always call her the call her the ace of Tokiwari, and I guess she's because she's the most powerful esper. And Misaki, even she, she comes back, and the queen, she's also a level five. So we get to know a little bit more about these people, and they're kind of having a back and forth chat. It's kind of one sided. Misaki doesn't really like her at all, so the girls kind of butt heads. And the other blonde girl has the ability to, I guess, mind control you. So she can, with the remote she carries, she can command 
all the students to, you know, become her, her slaves, basically. So it's an extreme mind control for her. I don't know if the range is what range is on or not, but... Yeah. But with, with Misaki, with her, since she, she's an electric esper, the, the power of mind control doesn't work on her, because apparently Misaki's got always got this field around her, this electric field, that prevents people from doing that kind of thing to her. So, it's kind of interesting. But these two girls, you can tell, they just do not like each other at all. And even Misaki makes a comment to the other girl like, Are you even a middle schooler? Because you don't look like a middle schooler. She's this busty, blonde girl that goes to school. And the other girl kind of makes a comment that, Well, with my power, I could get away with pretty much anything. You know, she, and she could. She could use my control on like, the principal and they let her in without you know, realizing, Oh, wait, we're being controlled. So. So that was kind of interesting. You have a little back and forth with them. Eventually, Kiriko comes along and they both of them walk out of the school with Satin, Yuharu, and another girl named uh, Eri. She was in the first season. Near the end, she was looking for a friend. That We meet her in the hospital named Banarai, I guess is how you pronounce her name. And these two girls kind of like best friends. And Banari's been in the hospital and I guess... I guess re recovering from the experiments that well, happened to her in the first season. And this is kind of like a kind of a slice of life moment. You have the girls kind of hanging out with someone that they helped in the first season. And they're just kind of hanging out in her hospital room. But while they're in there, Misaki kind of has it, wants to do something for her friend, so they kind of sneak out. The, the plan is to give her a gift. And Misaka kind of forgets that, oh, I left a gift in the room and all this stuff. And yeah, that's when the real plot happens. They find out there, there are like a couple of dangerous espers that are being held by, uh, uh let's see, they're named, I have it written down. Oh, man. Anti-skill, sorry. They're also kind of like judgment. They handle like dangerous espers. And most of them have uh, adults when they're in their group. And I don't, as far as I know, I don't think any of them have powers either. So I guess there'd be like level zeros working together with Judgment and the other law enforcement to keep care of things and that. And eventually they kind of cut with that. The prisoner escapes. You know, and he Kate takes one of the girls hostage. Takes the area hostage actually. While there's like alarms going off and all this stuff like that. While the other girls are kind of the gift shop hanging out trying to figure out what they want to do for a gift. And Kiriko and Yuharu kind of step up and put their armbands on because they gotta get to work and find out what's going on. Why the hospital's everybody freaking out, you know, like alarms going off and things like that. And of course Kiriko warns Misaka that don't get involved. Leave it to the authorities and us in judgment to figure this out. And of course, they don't really listen. <laughs> Misaka doesn't really listen. Like, yeah, she kind of goes back to the hospital room and like opens the window and like, climbs out the window. And she can use her like, electric power to climb walls. Basically, I guess she can use... I look at it as like a big magnet, so she can turn any... Like, I guess surface into a magnet, so she can climb walls and stuff like that. And her friend is about to be taken away by a helicopter when Misaka uses her powers to kind of lock the helicopter where it can't take off. So she's using her powers to grab the metal of the helicopter and kind of hold, hold it down. It's like a couple of feet off the ground, but it, it it can't move. Even the pilot's giving it all the full throttle, and it still will not take off. So that to me is kind of cool. I love seeing the different uses of the Esper powers in this series. And eventually, her friend gets kind of tossed aside. The criminals are kind of trying to escape, and they're like, "Fine, take her." And she almost falls off the roof when Satin jumps out there, and she's kind of like grabs her before she falls. Like she's kind of hanging on this little like stair rip railing thing and catches Eri before she hits the ground. But you Satin kinda of loses her grip and almost you know, almost drops everyone, but Kiriko comes along and teleports them to safety. While that happens, Misaka kinda of realizes her bag with the gift in it is being taken away by the helicopter. So she's like screaming and like freaking out and she grabs Kiriko who can teleport obviously and both of them kinda of run off and she teleports almost through the sky, and they get to where, I guess, they skydive for a bit. And Misaka, being 
you know, powerful as she is, even the people in the helicopter finally realize, oh crap, that's the level 5 Electro Master Misaka from Toriwa High School, or Middle School, so they're like, oh my god, that's this is dangerous. And sure enough, Misaka kind of fly, like, falls in front of the helicopter and just blasts the hell out of it with her railgun. And that to me was, was one of the best scenes in the whole episode, like, damn. Much like season one, Mizaka did the same thing with her power and he showed off first episode. It's pretty cool. Um, she pulls up the helicopter and Kiriko gets the criminals out before they hit the ground and I guess arrests them because they, they were trying to escape. And we get a little thing from Satin that everyone's kind of like, well that's Misaka, she's her usual self doing what, breaking the rules, not following what Kiriko says or like that and Satin makes a comment that that's what she likes about Misaka and I have to agree that's what everyone kind of likes about her she's not as a girl or girl she's a bit of a tomboy doesn't really take orders from anyone but yeah always is there to help when people need it and after all that the girls finally give the present to Banari which is a school uniform that I, I guess is a uniform that Satin and Yuhara wear at their middle school so they tell her that and eventually when you get out of the hospital and you're recovered and everything, you can come to our school. And live, live with them in their dorm, which they kind of hint towards in the opening, which I'll talk about in a minute. So that whole scene there at the present giving was kind of, it's, again, more sides of life. And that's what real gun does. It blends in a lot of, like, action, shown in action fighting, and then they go in sides of life. Comedy. Not so much romance, if you're looking for romance, this may not be the series for you, but unless you like Yuri, which is girl on girl, but they never really explore that route too much, so thankfully that's used more as a gag gift. And that's more by uh, Kiriko, the teleport girl. She always finds a way to you know, get under Misaka's skin like that and kind of get too clingy. <laughs> so, And that was kind of the episode in a nutshell. It was kind of self-explanatory. And after that, we get the opening, which they've been doing this like a bunch of shows. They attack the opening of the end, the end of the episode, which becomes the opening later on, but or next time. And the opening was cool. It's got a flip, flip side. They did the original opening for season one. And my my thing is like, usually a second season has a problem being as I guess crazy and over the top as the first season. I know this happens with some shows, but. With me, JC staff who was making this series. They pretty got a pretty pretty good track record on keeping keeping things all norm and pretty awesome for me anyway. So song song aside, we have a couple of visuals. We have a preview of the couple level fives that Miss Aqua will fight later on, and a reveal of Accelerator. And he's a big character from this Index world, and a little bit of Railgun world. And Toma, which, if you know Index, he's obviously the main character from that series. And he appears too, so it's like, what are they doing? Is Miss Pisaka and Toma finally gonna have some screen time together? Or, again, I know they had in first in Index Season 2. I'm not sure what they're doing. But yeah, the opening is really cool. I like it. The song's really nice, and visuals are, are pretty cool, like I said. Pisaka vs. Level 5 is it's gonna be awesome. If they do it, I hope they do. And for my predictions for the series, I'm predicting that, I'm hoping, kind of wishing that Last Order meets Misaka. And Last Order is just, she's kind of a short version of Misaka. And with Misaka, she's got all these clones of her, like all these little, they, they call her the, the sisters. And this arc, or I guess first half is probably going to be about them, her, her copies and stuff, and what they went through in the first season of Index. So, I'm hoping Misaka meets Last Order. If she doesn't, that's fine. I mean, they usually keep Last Order away from her. I'm not, not sure why, but yeah. And there's a shot of a longer-haired version, which I can't really talk about. But if you know the novels and you know Relgun, you might be know who I'm talking about. But I'll just leave it at that. Uh, Misaka with long hair. And I'm hoping this would be less Yuri romance comedy slapstick and more about the story and the origins of uh, Misaka. Like her power, where she comes from, and 
so I, I know all about that her story and everything, but I don't want to spoil it for everyone else. So. And I'm thinking this would be a 24, 25 plus episode series because the first season was over 24 episodes. Hoping it does that, like that. And I probably won't include any screenshots in this episode because I got kind of lazy last minute because this came out a week ago. <laughs> Or a while ago, so anyway, that's my impressions on Railgun S, episode 1. I'll probably be doing the whole series like this, episode 2 next time. Take care.